Let's talk about diffusion. This is a fascinating topic and it relates very closely to our discussions a couple chapters ago on heat conduction. Um, and we'll, there's just one concept called Fick's Law of Diffusion. So what do we mean by diffusion? If you take a drop of food dye and put it in, um, in some water, then if the water isn't moving, if there's no convection going on, then slowly that drop will diffuse and spread. I think you've all seen it. Um, you can get it to, to mix a lot better if you stir it. That's a forced convection. But I'm talking about letting, putting that water in a glass and just letting it sit there for a long time so it's not moving, putting a drop of, uh, of, of food coloring in there and watching it slowly diffuse. It's a very slow process. And we're going to talk about why it's so slow. So it's the idea that molecules move from a region of high concentration, so that's where you drop the drop in, um, to regions of lower concentration. So obviously the food dye concentration is lower out here. Um, slowly it diffuses out. So uh, the, the gas molecules have translational RMS speeds of hundreds of meters per second, uh, hundreds of miles per hour, and uh, at room temperature. So at, at such speeds, a molecule could travel across an ordinary room in just a fraction of a second. Well, why isn't it that then you, um, like somebody walks in the room and has perfume on, you can't, you can't smell the perfume immediately. Um, and usually, actually, you're going to smell the per perfume because of air currents. But even if, um, if you're able to keep the air really still and allow it to travel by diffusion, it would take you a long time before you smelled that perfume. Why is that? Well, the, these molecules, perfume molecules, for example, are traveling at extremely high rates of speed, but they're having a lot of collisions with other uh, molecules. So it'll start here, it'll bounce, it'll bounce around. It just takes a while for it to get um, from here uh, to you because of all these collisions. So uh, diffusion is very important in uh, transdermal patches, for example. So you put that, it's a patch that you put on a skin. There's a medication um, in this uh, little sombrero <laughs> uh, sized patch. There's a control membrane that controls the, f the rate of flow of that drug into the skin, and then the uh, skin absorbs the drug. It's diffusing into the skin, and eventually it enters the blood vessels. I think, uh, I believe that nicotine patches are transdermal patches. So uh, I was hinting at this before, that the diffusion of from a higher concentration region to a lower concentration region is very similar to the process of, of conduction of heat. And we, we worked out an equation for the, for the conduction of heat uh, dependent on the temperature difference. We related that to R factors and, and that sort of thing uh, for insulation back a few chapters ago. Same kind of deal here, but we're what we're going to think about is a channel of cross-sectional area A, length L, through which uh, some solute, uh, like food dye, is going to slowly diffuse. And we're going to ask how long that takes. That is governed by something called Fick's Law of Diffusion. So the mass of the, uh, the amount of the solute that diffuses from the one side to the other, from higher concentration C2 to lower concentration C1, that's how much makes it across that channel. It depends on the something called the diffusion constant, measured in meters squared per second. 
sometimes called a diffusivity in other contexts. We'll call it the diffusion constant. Cross-sectional area, we talked about that, measured in meters squared. The concentration difference, so this will be C2 minus C1. T is the time. Uh, obviously, the longer you let that thing sit there and, and randomly diffuse, the, um, the more that you'll, you'll get to diffuse. And then L is the channel length. And this is the formula. You can check the units out. Um, meter squared per second times <coughs> areas measured in meters squared, so that'll be meters fourth per second. Uh, change in concentration, that's uh, kilograms per meters cubed. So that takes us down to, uh, well, let's actually work it out. So D is meters squared per second. A is meters squared. C, concentration, that's a mass per unit volume. So uh, some of you in your chemistry will have seen concentrations measured in number of particles per unit volume or even in number of moles, moles per unit volume. Lots of different ways of measuring concentration. But here we'll just measure it in the mass of the, of the food dye, for example, per unit volume. So that's uh, kilogram per unit volume. That's delta C. Uh, T is measured in seconds, and length is measured in meters. So let's see if uh, we get anything sensible out of this. Meter squared times meter squared is meters to the fourth. In the denominator, meters cubed times meters is meters to the fourth. All the meters cancel. Happy day. Seconds cancel. We end up just with kilograms. So that'll give us the mass of the diffused um, solute for this uh, situation. Let's do an example. Water is given off by plants inside the leaf. <coughs> Water passes from the liquid phase to the vapor phase at the walls of the mesophyll cells. So these guys here. The diffusion constant for water, that's D, 2.4 times 10 to the minus fifth meters squared per second. That number is small. And the reason that number is small is that diffusion is slow. It's a long time. Uh, a stomatal pore has a cross-sectional area. Let's see. Here's the pore. Um, and we're blowing that up. We've got a cross-sectional area here and a length A. Um, both those numbers are given. Concentration on the interior side of the pore. So here's the interior side and here's the exterior. Uh, well, uh, let's see. Upper epidermis. So interior must be in here. That's in interior to the body. This is upper epidermis uh, near the, the surface. So here's the surface of the skin. So this uh, must be the interior side of the stomatal pore. And this will be, I'm sorry, the interior side. I'm sorry. Interior is right here. <laughs> oh, boy. And uh, here's the exterior side toward, the, toward the, the outside world up here. Anyway, the um, interior side is 0.022. The concentration on the outside is 0.011. Determine the mass of water that passes through the stomatal pore in one hour. So we just use Fick's law, dA <laughs> delta C times T divided by L. Uh, the diffusivity is given here. The cross-sectional area was given 8.0 times 10 to the minus 11. That's this. Um, times the difference, C2 minus C1, the higher concentration minus the lower concentration, um, 0 0.011, 0 0.022 kilogram per cubic meter, minus 0.011 kilogram per cubic meter. Then we need, we're asked about how much water 
uh, passes through that pore in one hour. An hour is 3,600 seconds. 30 um, minutes per hour times 30 seconds per minute, 30 times 30, I'm sorry, 60 uh, minutes per hour times 60 seconds per minute. Uh, 60 times 60 is 3,600. That's the number of seconds in an hour. And then we're dividing by length, that uh, length of the pore, 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5. So that's how much water passes through that pore. Not a lot, but it happens. Thanks very much.